Hi there, I'm, my name is Andy Piper and I work in the Cloud Foundry Developer Relations team here at VMware. This is my first ever VMworld and it's utterly awesome, it's just so exciting, it's a huge, huge event. And uh, here we are at the Cloud Foundry booth uh, in the big VMware section of the, of the show. So Cloud Foundry kind of stands out a little bit or it might be seen as a little bit unusual um, at VMworld because historically VMware has been all about you know virtualization of the infrastructure uh, and infrastructure as a service in cloud terms and Cloud Foundry is actually a platform as a service so that's a little bit different and so my role actually is a developer advocate and I typically am, spend my time talking with developers about why a platform as a service is useful. So a platform as a service sits above the infrastructure layer it really enables developers to be much more productive and much more quickly. So rather than having to provision a virtual machine, install an operating system, set up a database, install all the packages they need to code in the different languages they want, they simply get to download a simple command line tool, or in this case, uh, in the little video we're showing here, uh, we have um, some Eclipse tooling integration uh, using uh, the Cloud Foundry integration for Eclipse, um, which is part of the Spring Source tool suite. Uh, and you can simply write your code, in this case in JavaSpring, or in, for example, Ruby, or in Node JavaScript, uh, and very, very quickly just deploy to the cloud. You don't see the virtual machine, you simply see a cloud. Uh, when you want to scale it out, you can simply uh, run a couple of commands to say, OK, I need more instances now. My service has got more busy. So um, really exciting times in, in the Cloud Foundry uh, ecosystem. The open source project has been around for about 18 months now. Um, it actually was a, a year, I think, in April this year that it celebrated its first birthday. And uh, a few things have happened at VMworld this week. Uh, Pat Gelsinger, our incoming CEO, announced on Monday that uh, CloudFoundry.com, which is our hosted solution for a platform as a service, uh, will go into production by the end of the year. So it's been in beta. It's in beta right now. Uh, you can get a free account to try it out, kick the tires at CloudFoundry.com. Uh, and uh, as well as that, Pat has also mentioned that in the next sort of 12 months time frame, we'll be looking at a, a, an on-premise solution for customers. So part of that uh, on-premise story is another little thing which is up on our uh, booth pedestal here. Uh, it's, a, it's a tool called Bosch. Now, Bosch is kind of a weird name, but it's another open source project that lives under the, the VMware Cloud Foundry umbrella. And it's really a continuous deployment tool. So it enables you to script and deploy the entire platform. So if you've got an existing uh, vSphere environment, then uh, you can simply run the Bosch tool to deploy all of the runtime components of Cloud Foundry. There are a number of them. I won't go into you know, de detailed architectural detail like you know, health managers and cloud controllers, but there, there, there are a bunch of bits and pieces. And then you can also deploy clustered applications using Bosch. And if you want to refresh the platform, you can do actually continuous deployment without losing any, uh, any uptime for your applications. So Bosch is really cool. And the other really cool thing about Bosch, and this is, again has come out in this week's keynotes, is that Bosch actually allows you to target not just vSphere as your infrastructure, it also has uh, the ability to target, for example, Amazon EC2 and also OpenStack. So here at uh, VMworld, and we'll try and uh, go and have a chat with some of these guys later this morning, uh, we have our partners from Piston Cloud, who have contributed OpenStack support. And they actually have a new uh, thing called Airframe, which is really, really cool, uh, which is Cloud Foundry on top of uh, OpenStack. Uh, we've also got um, existing, you know, long-standing ecosystem partners here. Absolutely love these guys. We've got Active State, who've got a really, really cool product called Staccato. So they've taken the open source Cloud Foundry project and they've added Perl and Python support, and they enable you to build a, a private PaaS on that on that platform. Uh, we've got um, not with a booth, but we've got some folks from a company called AppFog, another wonderful partner for Cloud Foundry. They've got PHP support. Um, they've contributed that to the project. We've got Tier Three here this week, and they're awesome. They've actually got a separate fork of the project called Iron Foundry, and they've added .NET support, which is you know, not something that, that we have on our CloudFoundry.com service. And uh, we've also got partners like SkyTap, and SkyTap are enabling Cloud Foundry as a new uh, deployment option for some of their customers. So really, really cool stuff going on all around the show this week. So uh, really, if people are interested and uh, are coming by the booth here this week, they've had a chance to look at some examples of how quick it is to deploy applications onto Cloud Foundry, uh, and really just to talk to us about uh, our Bosch tooling, uh, our micro Cloud Foundry, which is Cloud Foundry running in a single, v single VM, uh, just running inside VMware Workstation or Player. 
uh, and really just learn about you know what it's all about. We've got sessions with partners like Intel, who have recently announced they're going to have it as an enterprise PaaS inside internally, uh, and uh, a number of other partner success stories. So really, really fun first VM world for me. Loads of energy. Uh, slightly different because I'm you know a developer advocate there's not not a huge number of people who are into the development side of things here lots of infrastructure folks but I think there's a really exciting story to tell there as well so thanks very much